Mahani. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, our next speaker for today is Dr. Ichiro, uh, who will be talking on. Uh, so, Dr. Ichiro is an associate professor in the Department of Otolaryngology and Head and Neck Surgery. And, uh, and Dr. Ichiro, he was uh, trained in Otolaryngology and Head and Neck Surgery in Kyoto University. After, uh, at present, Dr. Uh, Ichiro is working as an associate professor in the Department of Otolaryngology and Head and Neck had an exchanger in, in Utah University. He has received various honors and awards, ranging from a young faculty award to a, a lot of awards awarded by the American Bronchoesophageal Association, American Laryngological Association, uh, and he has been awarded as an excellent paper award from Japan ENT and uh, NIC uh, Basic Research Society. Over to you, sir. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, loud and clear, sir. Oh, great. Okay, so let me share my slide. Here we go. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank the committee member of the Learn Language Summit uh, for giving me a chance to present my paper here. So today I'd like to talk about this postmortic dysphonia, where do we stand? Actually, I have moved uh, from Kyoto University uh, to Fujita uh, Health University in Nagoya area in, uh, two years ago as a chairman and professor of uh, the university. So uh, this university is the largest university hospital in Japan. And uh, Fujita Health University is located in Nagoya area, which is um, at the center of Japan. And Nagoya is famous uh, for the Nagoya Castle, which is one of the three great castles in Japan. And it is also famous uh, for the dragon on the roofs. Roof. And also Nagoya is a home ground of a Toyota Motor Company. So there's a lot of Toyota cars in Nagoya area. So adductor type spasmodic dysphonia is classified as focal dysphonia. And the symptom <coughs> is um, uh, the patient has excessive tight closure of the vocal cord uh, causing the spastic voice. So the management of, uh, as for the management of the somatic dysphonia, um, as January says, voice therapy isn't effective. So uh, there are two kinds of options, one of Botox and the other is surgery. And also, as we know, there are several kinds of surgical techniques uh, reported so far. So, what is the most optimal uh, treatment for the SD? So as we expect, uh, I have no right answer uh, to the question so far. So today uh, I'd like to talk to you, give you the brief introduction of each um, surgical techniques uh, showing the evidence of the, each uh, procedures. So first, uh, the Botox is generally used and it is less invasive, and it can we can it can be treated. Patient can be treated in outpatient basis. However, the duration of the effectiveness isn't long. The short duration, so the patient needs repeated injections in every three to six months, maybe for a lifetime. So uh, Farnesh uh, has and his colleagues have reported the, uh, the systematic review regarding the effects of botulinum toxin and surgery among uh, SD patients. And this systematic review is the only systematic review so far comparing Botox and, and SD uh, and the surgery. So in this, excuse me, uh, in this uh, review, the 419 patients in 13 um, studies 
were treated with Botox, and 585 patients in nine studies were treated uh, with surgery. So here's a list of the kind of surgeries included in this systematic review. Uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve resection, uh, thyroplasty, TA myoneurectomy and thyroplasty, or uh, TA myotomy, and selective denervation and renovation technique. So uh, to make a long story to short, uh, both modalities, uh, both modalities, uh, that means uh, the Botox and surgery had a positive effect on objective and subjective voice improvement and quality of life. However, no preference uh, for one treatment was demonstrated. So uh, let's go to the surgical interventions for a doctor type S because we are surgeons. Uh, there are several kinds, uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve resection, selective denervation, renovation, TA myotomy or myoneurectomy, type 2 thyroplasty, and deep brain stimulation. So recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, resection for SD has initially reported in 1976, so almost 50 years ago. And Dado has reported uh, the uh, results, outcomes of recurrent laryngeal nerve resection, uh, including uh, of 243 patients uh, with a mean follow up uh, for a period ranging from 5 to 14 years. As a result, uh, 15 patients developed mild to moderate spasticity in 6 to 24 months after the surgery. And also 82 patients had little or no voice spasticity five to 15 years after the surgery. However, uh, the Aronson has reported the outcomes of 33 patients uh, who have treated uh, with recurrent laryngeal nerve resection. And the symptom recurrence rate was 64% within three years. So the, um, it is difficult to keep the effectiveness for a long time after the range and uh, resection. As for the uh, laryngeal adductor denervation, renovation surgery, or SLADR. Uh, this uh, procedure has been developed by Burke in 1999. And the procedure uh, includes the, uh, in this procedure, the adductor branches to the TA and the LCA are cut and uh, exterior or resided. And also the, the answer cervical nerve is anastomosed to the distal duct nerve stamp. So Chetri and his colleagues have developed, uh, have reported uh, the outcomes um, after with a mean follow-up period of 49 months, a relatively long-term follow-up results. And uh, the result was quite uh, nice. The VHI-10 score uh, was 35, 35 uh, before the operation. And after the operation, it uh, changed to 12.68, uh, uh, which is a re really good result. And also, the voice, voice breaks um, returned to normal in 74 patients. And the breathness has no difference be uh, be between the before and after the surgery. And endoscopic uh, thyroid uh, myoneurectomy has initially been developed, reported by Dominguez, and my, uh, which includes myectomy of the mid and posterior belly of the bilateral tear muscles, and neurectomy of the terminal fibers among the deep muscle bundles. And as for the thyroid arytenoid myoneurectomy, 
Uh, Dr. Sachin Gandhi and Mark Rimakul has reported a good result uh, with a mean follow-up period of uh, four, four years. <coughs> so they show the significant improvement um, in G, G and R of the grower scale and VHI uh, VHI uh, four years uh, after the surgery, even four years after the surgery. So which is quite good result compared to other modalities. And also the Ishiki and his colleagues have developed uh, the type through type last year for the doctor type SD. Um, he has reported uh, the first paper in 2000. And uh, after that, uh, he have invented the titanium bridge uh, to fix uh, the um, tired cartridges and, and reported the result in 2004. And Sanuki and, and Shiki reported the out long-term outcomes of type 2 type plastic for doctor type SD. Uh, including 19 case, 90 cases with a mean follow-up period from two uh, and five years. The success rate uh, was over 90 percent. So it's just quite good. And they have evaluated uh, the revision uh, cases which needed revision surgery, and uh, they found that um, the revision cases occurred in the initial cases and which were treated with elastic seam, um, seam, which were broken and displaced after the long term, after the surgery. So it is kind of a reasonable because uh, when we do mandibulotomy, um, we always uh, use fix the mandible with a titanium plate, I mean the metal plate. So after the type plasty, uh, the type, uh, type two type plasty, their thyroid cartridge is cut at the midline, so it became the two plates, two separate plates. So we need to fix with the metal or rigid uh, materials. No elastic uh, should be used you know, for this technique. And Sanuki also uh, has another long-term evaluation of uh, type 2 tyroplasty for the uh, SD patient and the uh, VHI 10 score um, showed improvement after the surgery and the score uh, level keeps normal, keeps low uh, for a long time. And uh, four years ago, uh, the Tenor Bridge has been approved by Japan FDA. Uh, in 2017, after the multi-institutional clinical trial. So let me show you the procedure of type 2 thyroplasty uh, for the SD. So there are two, three steps, cutting and separation and fixation. It's very simple. So the first, says, uh, the first step uh, is um, precise uh, midline incision. And the second step is interrupt the rate of voice tuning, vocal tuning, and fixation with titanium bridges. The pirate country is exposed, total exposed, uh, mainly for the other uh, around the midline, and precious midline incision is made. So as not to go beyond uh, the cartridge or the you know, vocal cord or damaged or the perforation may occur. After uh, incising, after cutting the cartridge, <coughs> uh, inner perichondrium is preserved. And the cartridge is separated. Okay. 
And special care uh, should be taken so as not to separate the cartridges at the level of the glottis. Usually two or three millimeter uh, gap is enough. Okay, and uh, you know the spare separated uh, cartridge that's fixed with a titanium bridge. So let me show you the outcomes after the type through tyroplasty, uh, which is um, given by the, uh, the courtesy of Dr. Hiroshiba in Ishiki Memorial Voice Center. So they have done the surgery for 200, more than 200 cases uh, with ADSD <coughs> uh, with a mean power-up period of 90, uh, 19 months. So here's the results. Uh, the VHI-10 score um, dramatically improved from 27 points to 13 points, which is the sig significant uh, difference, statistically significant difference. And also the patient satisfaction rate uh, was 17 um, excellent and 50% good and 26% are fair. And also the um, ages, the patient ages uh, has no effect on the VHI-10 improvement after the surgery. And also the um, duration before, duration of the symptom before the operation does not influence on the success rate of uh, this surgery uh, for the ADSD patients. And as for the gender, the male patients has less effectiveness, which was um, consistent with other moder outcomes of other modalities. So type 2 tyroplasty for SD has a significant effects on voice quality uh, on a long time. And it so let's go to the etiology of SD patient. Um, so as we know, you could, if you could kindly, sorry? Kind, uh, we're just running out of time. I request if you could kindly. Okay, sure. Okay, so let's skip this. Okay, so in the last part, uh, let me uh, show, introduce uh, you the brain, uh, deep brain stimulation. So deep brain stimulation uh, has initially developed uh, for the Parkinson's disease and the essential tremor, and which is approved by FDA in 1996. And there are more and more publications regarding essential tremor and deep brain stimulation uh, recently. As for the uh, deep brain stimulation for SD, um, the lions in Africa has reported the first case uh, more than 10 years ago, but the report was very limited. However, um, the very interesting paper has been uh, published uh, this year so from the uh, groups in Canada. So they have then the phase one prospective randomized uh, double blind uh, clinical trial of uh, deep brain stimulation for SD patients, including the six patients, the relatively small number of patients. And uh, the VHA 10 score um, showed a significant, uh, significant improvement uh, after the turning the deep brain stimulation on in the blinded brain in passion. And the brain, if they turned off, um, the VHI 10 score showed worse, and, and on again, it became better. And there is this single difference. And also VRQOL 
the effect was also shown, though it was um, close to the significance. So they are going to start the phase two clinical trial. So the result may be promising. So as a result, uh, the spasmodic dysphonia where we turned, uh, both buttocks and surgery have positive effects on objective and subject of voice improvements and quality of life. However, no preference for one treatment has been demonstrated so far. The prospective clinical trials uh, comparing treatment modalities uh, recommended uh, to initiate the optimal outcomes by direct comparison. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Professor uh, Shinya Hiroshima and Tetsuji Sanuki and Yuji Kanadawa uh, for the contribution and the courtesy of the them. Um,